Hi, my name is Jason Hayworth, uh, and I work for Apica Systems. Uh, I'm their chief product officer, and with me today is Daniel Bankston, the director of customer success. So we're a recognized leader in application load testing and active synthetic monitoring, um, trusted by large financial institutions, insurance companies, manufacturing, high-tech firms. Uh, active monitoring platform that proactively ensures KPIs and SLAs are met. That's the primary bread and butter of what we do. Founded in 2005 out of Stockholm, uh, we've got over 100 satisfied blue chip customers. Uh, our platform, again, is active monitoring and load testing based, and we have a rich ecosystem of plug and play integrations. You guys can see all the logos that we have there. There's several more, um, but uh, feel free to quiz us after if you want to know more about that. So the Apica platform. Um, the Apica platform is made up of two components primarily. There's the Apica load testing platform and the Apica synthetic monitoring platform. And within that scope, we have our own scripting tool sets. That's our Apica Zebra tester, as well as some of our own proprietary internal pieces. And we can take other people's scripting tools to go through and create these active load tests and active monitoring functions. We have a uh, very robust API that allows you to do most of the functionality that you can do from within the UI uh, automatically within the system. And we deploy our system into pre-production and production environments, as well as being able to kind of compete in that same CI, CD, SLDC lifecycle process where we do blue-green deployments, we do QA, we do support, all that good stuff. Uh, GitHub integration, obviously, which I think everybody uses these days, but if you have another CI, CD platform integration function, we can normally make that work as well. Uh, and then we have an ops integration function where we can take our data and use our own UI, our own reporting system, or plug into anybody else's out there. Uh, we're really big on this idea of stack flexibility. Um, I'm sure that's one of the keywords that you guys are tracking is open stack web 3.0. So <laughs> wouldn't shock me. Um, so the Apica platform, what does it really do? Um, so we are a full application lifecycle testing platform. What that means is we use the same user journeys for load testing that we do for monitoring. And the reason why this is important is because so many companies out there will load test individual components. They'll test the server, they'll test the firewall, they'll test the load balancer but they won't test all the other integration points in between. And when people go to run things in the live environment, stuff breaks, then you got to figure out where the actual bottlenecks are. And it's really difficult to do that in live production environments, where if you can do that ahead of time with proper real user journeys, your QA team is testing the same thing that your production teams are monitoring. Kind of makes sense to do this. So uh, along that line, we also do full stack application monitoring. So we can load all aspects of the application, including third-party data sets, multi-factor authentication, um, your OAuth pieces. If you guys are using other external third-party elements um, to do some of your tracking, like your, your DDoS tools or um, uh, anything out there related to the application flow where you're doing pixel tracking, those types of things, we can monitor all of that as well from the same user journey perspective. And we can test from any location, whether that's cloud, remote data center, on-premise, your grandmother's basement. <laughs> Um, you can pretty much load this up and test it anywhere. And we have integration with larger ecosystems. So for visibility tool sets, we integrate quite well with Grafana, Splunk, Tableau, AWS Quick Sites, pretty much anybody that can pull our API, we can pull other API. Uh, and we've got support tool integrations for partners like ServiceNow, PagerDuty, um, and then APM RUM and NPM partners. So with Apica, uh, you can know your speeds and capacity. Uh, this is incredibly important, especially in a modern application environments especially with more distributed stacks in the Web 3.0 world, you want to be able to understand your application and infrastructure performance compared to the ideal conditions um, using a consistent testing methodology. And the reason you need to use a consistent te testing methodology as opposed to spot checks or things like ROM or something else is because you want to be able to have a time series graph that shows your performance over time and in different conditions. So you can actually do proper scientific methodology to understand what your performance looks like. The... Um, the other part of this is, you know, really trying to understand bottlenecks in your system and your infrastructure so that your third party vendors who are actually charging you for their services that have SLAs assigned to those pieces, you can use the Apica system to actually hold them accountable for those uh, different elements. So, for example, if you've got infrastructure requirements that show four nines of availability, but you're clearly showing that your clients can't access and uh, take advantage of the four nines of availability, you can use Apica as an auditing uh, service tool to go back and hold your other vendors accountable. We do interesting things from a security boundary inspection perspective. Um, we, can do G we can verify that geofencing is actually working correctly. Uh, we can do application security checks for things like SSL, WAF, all your OWASP top 10. Uh, you can even load up um, pen testing functions in the platform itself and have a continuous pen testing in your environment to make sure that code changes that were made downstream didn't break the system over time. 
Uh, and then we can do third party uh, inspection tools as well. So we can test your DDoS system, we can test your MFA, we can test your cloud antivirus functions. Uh, and then we do trigger responses with very granular controls. So by triggered responses, it could be something as simple as we saw a certain threshold was hit because that threshold was hit, we want to send off an alert. Or it could be, we saw a threshold was hit, we know that this threshold means this, I want you to kick off a new Lambda function to spin up a new EC2 instance, or I want you to kick off a new load balancer. Um, and we can also do proactive alerting for incoming issues um, and do interesting downstream changes. Like we could potentially change your uh, GSLB functionality. Um, for some of our customers, we go through and grab additional information sets, things like TCP dumps or trace routes when we cert see certain race conditions happen. And then when we send that information into their actual op centers, we're sending them information that actually has all the context so they can make smart decisions to reduce that MTTR, but also drop that signal to noise ratio so they can get to the meantime to innocence much faster. So instead of spinning up a war room and having every group on the call all at once, you send the right message to the right group at the right time so people can solve things quickly and efficiently and stop uh, finger pointing at each other when they think problems are actually occurring. We also provide visibility into real business metrics. So we can give you a dollar value associated with the loss gain function when we show you your visualizations. So since we're tracking health as a performance number, if we see that your health is at 85%, we know what that 15% actually costs. So we can actually go back and say, this 15% costs you this amount in a re in real world environment. Um, KPI visibility as a percentage of health, like I said, is very important. And most people don't do that in the monitoring space. It's kind of up or down. And there's a lot more granular and nuance behind up and down. So we provide that level of visibility from a synthetic monitoring perspective. Uh, and we're also geographic and context aware in our reporting and real-time monitoring. So we can actually create scatter charts and heat maps to say, it looks like there's problems in this geographic region or in this part of the data center or in, you know, in a variety of different real world space environments. So we look from the outside in. That's what synthetics really do. The idea of synthetics is that I'm going to emulate real client behavior. And by emulating real client behavior, I can actually understand how my application works. So we simulate the user journey. And that user journey could be something cloud-based, HTTP-based, but it could also be something like modify SSH sessions or go through and open up video channels or spin up a Windows client and add some virtual machines on there because that's what my real world environment actually looks like. And I'm going to copy mouse clicks and keyboard strokes to make sure that I get the most information out of this as possible. But then I can also integrate with uh, all my other MFA, SSO providers, or any other third-party data pieces that I need to see in that space and give you a real aggregate roll-up of what the user experience is like at any given point in time. On I top question, of that, yes, sorry, please. Uh, who is your target user or customer for the tool? Is that the devs? Is that the infrastructure people, the networking guys? So we actually wind up talking to all of those folks because we interact with all those different elements. Our typical entry point is with developers um, because we provide that level of visibility and understanding that they need to make their jobs easier. But once we get past that, the ops folks start using us because we are able to go through and do outside in looking monitor functions for things like BGP, DNS, um, your third party data structures, anybody out there that might be doing sysops or DevOps integration functions. Um, and then we have quite a few people on the network team that use Apica as well, because some of the uh, more traditional NPM functions we can do from a synthetics perspective to generate more relevant information for gathering that information. So flow logs, IP fix, all that good stuff, it's fantastic information, but it's only fantastic information if you've got consistent data coming in that you can look at time series events and give you that triggered response. You can actually use this as kind of as a control function to grab more of that network data as well. Did that answer your question? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. thanks. Perfect. Yeah, no problem. Um, what we can also do is set up these uh, synthetic user journeys at multiple different locations. So it's not just putting it in one data center, it's putting it in multiple data centers or on-prem or at these different locations, or I might actually put it inside my cloud and be able to do delta measurements between direct, say, AWS cloud presentations for the application function and then the outside world. And then I can do that math in between and I can say, well, it looks like something is happening here then do further checks on my actual route path and say, it looks like we have element problems in this location. So when you're going back and trying to hold folks accountable for their different SLAs, a peak is a really good tool for doing that. And if you want to be able to do load testing for this in your blue environments before you deploy to production, we can spin this up millions of times and simulate millions of user connections from all around the world. And that's how we're able to go through and give you these real good baselines and give you those percentage of health metrics. That makes sense to everybody? Yeah, okay, cool.
So what's our deployment process looks like? It's actually pretty straightforward. Um, step zero um, is that we determine your deployment type. Is it gonna be SaaS? Is it gonna be hybrid? Is it gonna be on-prem or is it gonna be air-gapped? We can work in one of these or any of these simultaneously because we, are, we do have the capability to act kind of as this worker agent function between these different environments. Next, we map your KPIs. So this helps us to define your success criteria, whether it's speed to load pages or content from certain um, data sources, whether those are CDNs, caches, or origin. Uh, we do your flow tracking of your actual application infrastructure, and then we look at um, your plans to reduce MTTR and MTTI. Um, typically speaking, most of our customers, when they start looking at this, um, they initially look at it from the reducing MTTR, MTTI uh, number sets, but quite quickly they realize that if we expand this out and start using this for more advanced RCA and more advanced testing mechanisms, we can actually go through and actually improve our overall software from a long-term perspective by doing continuous iteration, continuous development of the actual scripting tool itself and reusing those scripts in that same CI CD pipeline. From there, we build user journeys and we can take user journeys by actually looking over somebody's shoulder and watching those pieces, or we can take ROM recordings, or we can go through and grab different log set data and track those pieces, but there's lots of ways that we can build these user journeys. And we typically will build user journeys that are uh, simple and complex for different use cases, because you wanna be able to go through and isolate different elements within, the, uh, within your application environment, but you also wanna be able to do the full span check. And then you can actually go through and compare and contrast those pieces to say, hey, the application looks like it's running slow, but I'm actively monitoring these smaller components this smaller component appears to be the issue. It helps you to flag it, understand who's affected from a blast radius perspective. Um, and then we also go through and build mitigations into the test harness. So the mitigation could be something simple like we talked about, um, going through and actually sending off an alert, or it could be kicking off a TCP dump, spinning up a new instance somewhere, kicking off some downstream of Pika functionality. But we build that into uh, the initial deployment process. From there, we test and monitor. So we bring up your blue environment, hammer it with millions of connections, and say, if it's good to go, then you kick over to your green environment and we start monitoring with the same scripts. So you're getting the same consistent information at all those stages. Then we provide visibility and reporting of your different KPIs. So you can use Apica's dashboards and our own functionality. Um, we have several companies out there uh, where their C-levels are actually taking Apica data, whether that be reports or dashboards on a daily basis to understand what the technical impact is on their business. Um, then we can generate reports for daily, weekly, monthly consumption for different teams. So you can get a report that's specific to your function, your application flow, your business logic, whichever you want. We can handle all those, get them to the right group at the right time in a consistent pattern. What, consistent what sort basis. of APIs do you have? What, um, what can you actually integrate with uh, at a, you know, API programming level? Pretty much anything. <laughs> so we're, we're an open scripting platform. So if you can script it up, okay. we can integrate and pull data. Okay, but it, I mean, you, you talk about having APIs available. So mm -hmm. Python, Perl, uh, E++, uh, BAT. From, but we typically speaking, we're using JSON, but I mean, Okay. What do you think about from a language perspective? Is there anything that we can't support these days? <laughs> no, you, you can use whatever language yeah. you want to pull your API. We, uh, uh, um, yeah, yeah. We, we present the data in JSON, of course. Okay. Yeah, we present it in JSON. You can use whatever language you want to bring from. Okay. Yeah. Do you provide any SDKs for particular languages, or is it just here's our API and we're going to return you JSON with the schema? Mm, at this moment, it, it's uh, we don't have SDKs for it. We we just publish our open API. Uh, CICD pipeline integration. So we build automations into the process and we find the KPIs, repeat this process over and over again. And that's our whole kind of loop around that area. 